Welcome to this episode of At the Eyepiece. Tonight is going to be a web screencast of a product that I've been using for a few years now. It's RT GUI. It stands for Real Time Astronomy Program with GUI Interface. This is basically an observation planning software. Okay. Um, probably say that most observers really don't plan their observing sessions out. And, and that could be for a number of reasons. Number one, they lack the tools to do so. And number two, maybe they lack the time to do so. Um, and the more expensive programs, well, they're just frankly too expensive. This is where RT GUI really addresses all of those issues. First off, it only takes a matter of minutes to download and install. And literally a few clicks and you have a very good observing session uh, already planned out. And then finally, it's a free product. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here you'll be, uh, once you start the product, you'll go ahead and be uh, brought up to this screen here. Now you do have to do some setup on it, basically just setting up your latitude and longitude for your specific location. If you're uncertain about those, do a quick search Yahoo or Google your particular city and you should have no problem finding that information. Once you go ahead and do that, then you should be pretty much saved and ready to go. It pulls the date and the time from your current computer, so you, maybe you want to double check make sure that's pretty uh, correct, but most most time it is. Okay. Now, if you do have a computer-controlled telescope, you're familiar with tours, and of those tours, you're familiar with the best of the evening sky type of tours. RT GUI has a very similar feature as the best of the sky. So, in a simple click of the mouse, we already have essentially our observing session planned for tonight. Click next so you can see how we can scroll through a number of the objects that we have uh, or that RT GUI has chosen. Again it's just based off of the current date and time. And you can see it gives all the real relevant information to the objects. It's right ascension, it's declination, it's magnitude, what constellation it's in. It's a common name or secondary name, such as the NGC reference here for M13. And it also has some uh, uh, additional information, such as rise and set time, and their altitude and azimuth setting. So a lot of good relevant information. So our best of the sky is ready to go. Now let's say you don't have a computer to take this out to, uh, to be next to you at the eyepiece of the telescope. So we can just go ahead and choose the save matches field here or, or option and what this will do is create a very simple text mm -hmm. file 52 matches this text file can now be printed as is and brought to the telescope with you and you can just go ahead and review that sequentially right at the eyepiece or you can go ahead and perhaps you want to import it into Excel and do a little bit different sorting with this information. Maybe you want to sort it by right ascension, then by constellation. You can sort it by uh, magnitude. Well, once it's in Excel, you can do a few other things, but um, you can certainly print this as it is and have a working observing list ready to go at the telescope. Now, uh, that was the best of the sky feature. Let's say you had a particular object that you wanted to go ahead and look up. So clicking the simple search brings up this window and it really is a simple search. Just choose the common name that you're looking for. I typed M32 and boom, it's all right there. All the relevant information about it. Now let's go to the final search parameter here, which is the search wizard. This is really where the product I think shines. We can go ahead and choose here, uh, search for deep sky objects. And of course, we have these options here in the middle. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and search for all open clusters. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I can choose a particular constellation. Or, um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to do that. I'll just leave everything. But there's a couple of other important parameters that you might want to go ahead and go through and change. One of those is a minimum altitude and the maximum altitude, as well as the minimum magnitude. So let's say I want to go ahead. I don't want to see something too low. I'll choose 30. I don't really want to see anything directly above me at the zenith either. And I don't really want to see anything dimmer than, say, 10th magnitude. So now, with a click of the mouse, I have my complete observing 
list ready to go for tonight if I just wanted to view my open clusters. Of course, if you want to save these matches to print, you can do so. Just choose Save Matches here. Um, and that's it. You're you're ready to uh, to go. And of course, you can do your next search if you wanted to look up the planetaries um, and add to that and print another observing list for tonight. That's fine. Now let's go ahead and look at a couple of other things here. We can look at stars to observe as well. And this is a really cool feature. We can do the best of the sky double stars. And again, we can go ahead and put in the same parameters. Say 30. I don't want to really look at anything right above me. And let's say with doubles, we'll go ahead and we'll keep it at magnitude 12. Choose Go. After a moment, I have my list of double stars for tonight. Very, very simple to use. And again, if I save those mm -hmm. matches to the matches.txt file, I have tonight 19 double stars that I can go ahead and look at. Now, I can go ahead and plan this also in the future, meaning that if I know that I'm going to go out on Tuesday night, I can go ahead and plan ahead by, just by changing the date and, of course, changing the time. Maybe I want to look at things that are, you know, best observed at around 2 a.m., for instance. Just with a couple of changes here to date and time, I can do that. Also, it's important to note here a really good feature. If you don't keep an observing log, I highly recommend that you do. Let's take a look at the feature of RT GUI for the purpose of the observing log. Now, once I have an object that's chosen here, just click observing log and it brings up this very simple text field. Since this is a double, I can say, let's say blue primary, white secondary, okay, easy split in 8.8 .8 ultra wide angle at 230 time, 239 times, whoops magnification. Now, I'm not really sure why it brings up a second line here. I'll just click OK. Um, but here you can kind of see as an example of what the observing notes show. And you can see I've used this a couple nights ago actually. It gives you the date, the time, the location and you can see how you're going through there and it's just a very simple way to keep a very well very easy and straightforward observing list you can print that out put it in a binder keep it for uh, well forever and it's just a really good feature as well to RT GUI now um, there's another really great feature with this product and its ability to go ahead and control a computerized go-to telescope. Now that's very simple to do. You just click on the options, move this window down here a little bit, and here it's just another few clicks of the mouse and you're ready to go. Choose the type of telescope that you have, uh, choose the size and the sky conditions, and I believe these are optional parameters, but I like to have everything as much set up as possible. And then if you have your, uh, if this was out in the field, your telescope was on and it was uh, aligned uh, and then connected via USB to your computer, clicking COM search should auto detect it, highlight the COM port that is shown it, with my Mead uh, LS8 ACF, it's COM4, click OK and then you're ready to go. I tested this out on Friday night and it was absolutely wonderful to go highlight an object, choose go to and every single time the objects were in the field of view of my 14 millimeter eyepiece. Of course, I don't have the telescope uh, connected. That's why the unable to connect at the time. Now, uh, I will expand on a later date the sky chart feature here of uh, RT GUI, but that's something that's going to be on a future uh, webcast since there's a lot of things relevant to that as well. But I think I've covered the main uh, purpose here of RT GUI. It's a fantastic. Um, observational planning product 
as you can see, extremely easy to use. Uh, a decent amount of information and catalogs available. I particularly enjoyed the addition of the double stars. Uh, and this feature here, carbon stars, I also used in the, uh, in the version um, 9 beta that I looked at the other day as well, which, uh, which worked fantastic and it was a lot of fun. The current public released version is 8.5, so I do recommend you checking back often with the page to see when they come out with new catalogs and new versions. So that's RT GUI, Real-Time Astronomy Program, a definite highly recommended product for anyone that's a backyard stargazer. This is At The Eyepiece, and thank you for listening.